Hi and welcome back. This is video three of three and the last video on how to create a block diagram using Microsoft Word. If you don't have the previous document or the document we were using in the previous video open, you can pause this video and open that document now. When the document opens, it should look similar to the one I have on my screen. Now I still have my format text effects side panel open and that's because I have not closed this document since I started creating these videos. Anyway, all we're going to do in this video is we're going to add some text and adding text is very simple. To add text to the rectangles, all we have to do is click into the rectangle, I'll click in, and just start typing. I'm going to call this one controller. I'm going to take note that I'm on the home tab and the font that I'm using is Calabre or Calibri 11. That happens to be the default font that Microsoft chose for Word. And the reason why they chose that font was that it was specifically created to be ADA compliant. ADA meaning the American Disabilities Act because people who are, are, uh, have eyesight problems or partially blind can use a screen reader and it reads this font almost perfect. Then I'm going to add more text to the other rectangle. I'll click into it and here I'm going to say this is going to be the feedback sensor. Now notice how the text wrapped. I did not press the enter key. When the text needs to wrap or if it doesn't fit it automatically wraps around to the second line. It makes it very easy to enter text. So I'm going to click off of there to deselect. And now what I need to do is I need to add some text which is not part of an object. So to do that, I'm going to use the text box object. I'm going to come up and make sure that the format tab is selected and then I'm going to come over to the insert shapes and in the, in the object selector the very first object in here is the text box there's another way to do text box by saying draw text box but I'm just going to use this tool I'm going to click on it I'm going to drag in and I'm going to drag a text box and it doesn't matter how big that text box is at this time now let's check what the font is. Notice I have a cursor blinking in here. The text box has handles on it. So I'm going to come up to the home tab and I'm going to see what the font is and the font is set to Calabre 11 and in the text box now I'm going to make sure I'm in it. I'm going to type the word set point. S-E-T point. I'm then going to size this text box so that the, the text fits and just fits. It's a little difficult because when I size this, um, the, 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 the font disappears. If you take notice, it disappeared. So I'll bring it in, and that's about right. And I'm going to bring this up a little bit, and that's about right. In fact, I'm going to bring it down just a bit. And I want this text to be on top of this arrow so that it looks like it's setting on top of this arrow. So I'm just going to grab this text box. Now, first of all, I'm going to deselect it. And notice that there's a line on that. I don't like that line, especially for what we're doing. I want this to just be a label. So to get rid of the line, I'm going to select the text box and then I'm gonna come and do on the format tab 
in I'm going to select the format tab and in the shape outlines I'm going to drop that down and I'm going to say no outline and I'll click there now I'm going to drag this text box down and to drag it down I have to get a hold of the border so I'm going to drag this text box so that it sits on top of the arrow now I want you to notice that when I put it there the arrow disappeared the arrow disappeared because the text box is sitting on top of that arrow now there's a a couple of different ways to fix that situation one of the easiest ways is I can send the text box behind the arrow. So on the Format tab, there's an option in the Arrange group that says Send Backward. Well, I'm going to drop this down and I'm going to say Send Back. And when I send back and come back to the drawing, you'll see that, and I deselect it, you'll see that set point now has no frame and you can see the arrow. I want to add another text box but instead of doing that I'm going to take set point notice how the the frame on it is kind of dashed instead of a solid line I'm going to now select the frame it's turned solid and I'm going to use control C to copy the text or to copy the whole box control C I'm now going to click away to deselect and I'm going to do a control V to paste it and something that I don't quite understand with Word is that when you paste a text box the font changes it's easy to fix but it's just really annoying now at least it's doing this in 2013 maybe 365 won't do that if you're using the word product for Mac it might do not do that so I'm going to come into the text box I am going to select set point the whole thing I'm then going to go to the home tab I'm going to drop down in the font group I'm going to drop down the font now I want Calabre that's what the font we've been using, Calabre. And we've been using 11 point, so that's good. And then while set point is selected, I'm going to type the next text that I want. And what I want is output. So I'm going to type output. And then I'm going to take the border, click on it, and move this text box over to this area notice it is on top of the line I want it under the line so I will come up and select the format tab come over to the arrange group send backward drop this down send back I want to just raise this a little bit and now I have, and I clicked away to deselect, and now I have my output label. I want to add two more pieces of text. I want to add a plus sign and a minus sign in the summing junction. So I have a text box that I copied already, which means it's still on the clipboard. So I'm going to just do a control V. I'm going to select the text, go to the Home tab, change the font to Calabri. While it's selected, I'm going to type a plus sign. I'm going to size this text box. That's about right. And while the text box is here and select it, I'm going to copy it. So I'm going to do control C. I'm going to deselect it. I'm going to then paste another copy of it. Control V. I'm going to slide it out of the way a little bit. I'm going to select that plus. I'm going to 
go to the home tab make sure it's set to Calabre and while it's selected I'm gonna make that a minus sign now while the minus sign text box is selected I'm gonna take the frame of it and I'm gonna drag this minus sign down to the feedback and drop it I have to send that text box behind the summing junction so I'll come up to the format tab arrange send backwards send to the back but something happened this time that you may not have expected it did send it behind uh, it did send it behind the object but actually I don't want it behind the object this time I want it in front of the object so I'm gonna come up to the arrange bring forward this time I'm gonna bring it to the front but now that I brought it to the front I can't see the circle anymore so what do I do about that well right now we can change the transparency on the fill of that text box so to do that what I'm gonna do is in my format shapes area I'm gonna click on this fill and line if it already is not selected and I'm gonna make sure the fill option is open and notice I just collapse it you open it and I'm gonna say no fill when I say no fill you come back over and you can see that the box went transparent basically I'll click off and now you can see the minus sign minus sign is a little small I'm gonna select it again I'm gonna select the minus sign I'm then gonna go to the home tab I'm gonna increase the font so instead of 11, I'm going to make it 14, just to get a little bigger. And I'm going to reposition this somewhere right about there. And I click the way to deselect it. Now I'm going to bring the plus sign in. So I click on the text box where the plus is, take the frame, bring it down, drop it. I've got the same problem going on here. It's on top, but it blocks out the summing junction. So I'll come over while it's selected. I'll come to the fill. I'll select no fill. Now I can re come back over and reposition that. And that looks pretty good. I don't really have to change the size of the plus sign, although I can. Let me come in and select the plus sign. This could be a little tricky when you got multiple objects. And let's see if going to 14, nope, that's a little too big. So maybe 12 works there. I'm just trying to get them so that they look somewhat visible and that you can see them you could play around with this as much as you want and I'm gonna call this block diagram complete there's one last thing I like to do I like to group the objects because right now everything's a single object in fact if I take this rectangle and click on it I can move this rectangle and really screw things up I'm gonna click the undo to undo that so I want to group them so that it becomes one solid object to do that I'm gonna bring my mouse around and I'm gonna select I'm gonna drag a square around everything and make sure everything is selected you can tell everything's selected by handles on everything and then I'm going to make come up to the format tab and in the arrange group I'm going to come to group 
drop this down and say group when you look at this now I have one object in here and I can take this object if I come onto the frame I can move this object around now as a whole group and while it's like that I'm gonna try to get it centered in my canvas and then I can also size the canvas so I'm gonna grab this handle I'm gonna bring the canvas up that way it doesn't take up so much space and I can type text in here if I want in fact it's centered I'm just going to left justify and I can type text from this point on. And if at some point in the future I need to make a modification to this block diagram, I can select it select it I can then come up to the format tab and in the format ribbon I can go over to group and I can say ungroup now everything's an individual object again I can click off I can make any changes I want to make and then when I have all the changes that I want to make I can select everything again and come over and say group. Well that's it. You've created your first block diagram and I hope this helps you in doing the block diagram assignment that you're, you're doing this week. So good luck. If you have any questions, drop me a line. You want to make sure you save this document. You don't want to lose it. So I'll see you later. Bye.